So today we are going to look into the pros and cons of doing A levels privately. Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Saad, and you're watching Math Lead by Saad, the channel where I make videos on O level and IDCSC maths and ad maths and A level maths and videos like these to help you navigate through your academic journey. So whenever you're applying to a university and given that you're applying to a good university, the most common deal breaker can be your grades, which obviously begs the question that if it's just grades that matter, should you really go to a school and then do your A-levels or should you just do it privately while just focusing on your grades? So that's what we're gonna look into today. I'm not in any way going to give you a suggestion. However, in the end, I'm gonna give you something which I use also a lot of times to make a decision whenever I'm confused. And you can also use it to make that decision for yourself. So we're gonna look into three pros and three cons of doing A-levels privately. So pro number one, doing A-levels privately can be time saving. So the issue with doing A-levels from a school is that you have to follow the schedule that the school gives you. So I've seen this uh, happen to a lot of students that they'll have the first class at nine in the morning and then the second class will be at 1 p.m. So what do you do in those three, four hours? Well, obviously you end up wasting a lot of time Time, you end up draining a lot of energy and if you compare this with uh, doing a levels privately you can sort of pick and choose the class that you want the timings that you want and make it easy for yourself save a lot of time and you know you'll have the mornings to yourself you don't have to follow a fixed schedule which uh, we'll look into can also be a con but that's how it is when you're doing a levels privately you don't have to follow a fixed schedule and you can utilize the morning to learn some skills or maybe learn a language or do whatever it is that you're interested in you have the time to do that in the morning because you don't have to go to a school and make sure that you mark yourself present because that can also have consequences if you don't have a certain percentage of attendance the school may not register you for the exam so yeah that's a benefit of doing a-levels privately and that is that you end up saving a lot of time pro number two is you get to have the teachers of your choice so whenever you're doing a-levels privately it's up to you who you want to study physics from chemistry from eco accounts whatever subjects it is that you have and if you're okay with the idea of learning online you have like a world of options at your disposal whereas if you are going to a school if you do a levels from a school you may not always be given that option i know some schools do give you the option to choose your teachers but obviously they will give you the option to choose from the teachers that are available but if you're okay with the idea of learning online you have like a world of options in front of you to choose from but that's something that's an advantage that you don't get if you do a levels through a school now pro number three is that you end up saving a lot of money yes if you are in pakistan then pe school ek a level school ki jo price around 45 to 50,000 per month. Hai. Whereas if you uh, privately with a teacher, ke paas tuition ja ke padte hai, to agar hum, let's say maximum 10,000 or 12,000, if you compare the price, it's still a lot less. And you know, another way that you end up saving money is that you don't have to pay admission fees, you don't have to pay security deposit and you know, schools have a way of billing a lot of expenses to you. So you don't have to pay all that. You just have to pay the subject fee and that's it. Okay, so now that we've seen all the positives, it's also important to look at the other side of the picture. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss three cons before I give you a little something which will help you make that decision. So con number one is no scholarship. Yes, if you have good grades in O levels, then you actually might end up landing yourself a good scholarship in a good school, which you can't do that if you do A levels privately. If you're doing it privately, you have to pay the subject fees irrespective of your grades but this is an advantage that you get in a school but for this to make sure that you are eligible for the scholarship you have to make sure that you have really good grades in all levels okay con number two is that there is no social life if you are doing it privately so if you're doing it through a school on the other hand then you know there are a lot of events there are sporting events there are social events and there are like group tasks so you end up making a lot of friends which obviously you may not be able to if you're doing it privately. Why? Because you know there, are, there aren't any team activities if you're doing it privately, whereas in school you'll get multiple chances, multiple events for you to socialize. So if you're a social person, then this is something that you must consider. Okay, con number three is that it's difficult to stay in routine because you don't have to wake up early in the morning. You might end up sleeping late. You might end up just messing up your whole schedule compared to if you're doing A-levels from a school, then you know you have to sign in or you have to report to school at a certain time, which will at least, even if you're not sleeping early, it will at least make you wake up early and it will somehow make you or help you stay in routine. You'd have to be like really disciplined if you want to do it privately and make sure that you don't 
don't fall off track whereas in school school kind of uh, gives you that little push to stay disciplined and to stay on track now if you think that i've confused you or i've made matters worse like i said i have a little something which will help you make that decision it's called the weighted average decision matrix it's uh, something that i read in a book i think it was uh, the fast lane millionaire so and i've been using it for a very long time every time i find myself difficult or i find myself divided between two options so here it is here's how this works okay so what I have here is, like I mentioned, is something called the weighted average decision matrix. And you can see that I've written five factors over here. Now I'm gonna pick three factors and you can pick any three of your choice. You can add more factors also. The factors that I have are budget, good teacher, social life, time, and extracurricular activities. Okay, so I am obviously going to pick budget, okay? because uh, if a school is not budget friendly, it can be a deal breaker. Good teachers obviously matter a lot to me. And social life, well, I said earlier, I'm not a very social person, but uh, it may be uh, a deal breaker for you. So that's why I've picked social life, okay. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna assign a certain weightage from one to five, depending on how important it is to you. So if it's very important, you're gonna give it a five. If it's not important at all, you're gonna give it a one, okay. So let's start with budget. What is the weightage that we should assign to budget? So unless you're coming from Ambani family, I think this will probably be a one for you. But uh, I think for any um, middle class, upper middle class student, budget can be a deal breaker. So I'm probably gonna give this a four. Okay, that's how important budget is. Good teachers, obviously very, very important. So I'm gonna give this a five. Social life, not very important for me. So I'm probably gonna give this a three. Okay, now then what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how well does uh, a school perform in budget terms. Okay, how good or how budget friendly is school compared to private? So once again, we're going to give it a score from one to five. So if, it's, if school you think is extremely budget friendly, you give it a five. If you think it's not friendly at all, you give it a one. So schools, as we know, are not very budget friendly. Like I said, you have to pay on average, if you're in Pakistan, 40 to 45,000 per month. And you, along with that, you have to pay admission fees and security deposit and whatnot. So I'm probably gonna give this a uh, two. Whereas if you do it privately, I think doing A-levels privately can be very budget friendly. So I'm probably gonna give this a four. Now, what we're gonna do with these scores, uh, you'll find that out in a minute. Good teachers, now, in a school, you are at the disposable or disposal of the management. Unless you get like a really good offer, then you end up with the teachers of your choice. But even then you have like a limited pool of options to choose from. So as far as school is concerned, I'm gonna give this a four or a three, you know, you guys can decide. And as far as private is concerned, you know, private, I mean private, uh, sky is the limit. You can choose whichever teacher you want, especially if you're okay with the idea of online learning. Now, as far as school is concerned, I think uh, school, the social life uh, in school is a clear winner. I'm probably gonna give it a five. Whereas if you're doing it privately, uh, you know, you don't really get a lot of social life. So I'm gonna give it a three. Okay, now what we're gonna do is in the column that you see towards the right is that we're gonna find out the total score. And the way that we're gonna do that is that we're gonna multiply the score with the weightage. So a lot of math going on here. So two times four is eight. So let me just write that here. Four times five is 20. You know, this is how I got 20. Five times three is 15. Uh, so eight plus 20. In fact, let's do 20 plus 15, that's 35. 35 plus eight is 43. So that means a school scores 43 points. Now let's uh, see how things are with private. So private, you do four times four, that's 16. Then you do five times five, that's 25. And then you do three times three, which is nine. So 16 plus nine is 25, is it? Yeah, 16 plus nine is 25. 25 plus 25 is 50. So here, private is the clear winner. Let me just write winner. Okay, but like I said, this is not a suggestion, this is not a recommendation, it's your decision, okay? Discuss it with your parents. This is just a little something to help you make that decision. And this is not something that's just restricted to deciding whether you should do A-levels privately or through school. You can use it in whatever aspect you want in life. So yeah, that's it. I hope this video gave you some clarity. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you've decided in the comment section below. That's it for this one, fellas. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.